You know, now that we live in a post-fairy type society, I feel like people don't talk about the dragon type that much, and I mean, it makes sense. Like, it's still a very solid type, but like, back in the day, the dragon type was one of the most dominant types that Pokemon has ever seen, and it was extremely notorious for it. I mean, specifically in generations 4 and 5, the dragon type was absurdly good. There were so many good Pokemon with the type, and thanks to Generation 4's physical special split, they finally had physical stab. And it wasn't just any physical stab. It was fucking Outrage. A 120 base power move with perfect accuracy. Of course, Outrage did lock you into using the move for 2-3 to three turns, and yes, you were confused after using it, but like... Being locked into the move for 2-3 to three turns doesn't matter all that much when like... So little can actually switch into it safely, especially a banded outrage. Now, the dragon type wasn't perfect or anything, but it didn't need to be perfect to be dominant. I mean, of course, dragon types do have that ice weakness, and a lot of the best dragon types have a quadruple ice weakness, and yeah, the steel type does resist dragon, but even then, like I said, a lot of dragon types had the coverage to deal with steel types, and even then, Nothing in the game had a quadruple dragon resistance, just a normal one. And a resistance doesn't mean you're taking no damage. A lot of dragon types were so strong that even resisted hits are doing decent damage. There were a lot of checks to dragon types, but there were very few hard counters. I mean, a big part of why Garchomp was banned in Generation 4 was that it was generally agreed upon that it had no counters. Garchomp was the second non-legendary Pokemon to ever be banned to Ubers, and it was the first non-legendary Pokemon to be banned for Ubers just for being absurdly fucking strong, and not just being a fucking weirdo playing a different game. And even in Ubers, it's a really good Pokemon. It didn't even end at Garchomp in Generation 4. Once it got access to Outrage, Salamence was banned to Ubers as well. Now to be fair, unlike Garchomp, it's not actually that great in Ubers, but the fact it got banned there at all says a lot about the strength of the Dragon type in Generation 4. Now you might think with how strong they were in Generation 4 that they'd hit Dragon types pretty hard in Generation 5, but uh... Oh no. No they did not. Garchomp and Salamence came back from Ubers to terrorize the Overused tier, and while Salamence isn't anything crazy in Overused, Garchomp is a very solid Pokemon in the tier. Garchomp got a new ability in Rough Skin, which was actually a pretty significant factor in the fact that it was allowed back into Overused in the first place, and that led to a lot of semi-defensive Chomp sets, such as Rocky Helmet and Offensive Stealth Rock. Really nasty stuff, it's a great Pokémon in Generation 5 Overused. It's not like they're the only two Dragon types either, far from it. I mean, Dragonite was significantly buffed with the addition of Multiscale, Latios is one of the best offensive Pokémon in the tier, and then, while it's a pretty flawed Pokémon in a lot of areas, you've got the absolutely ludicrous power of Curem Black. Dragon types are so good in Generation 5 Overused that there's actually an entire team style dedicated to having multiple offensively orientated Dragon types and a Magnezone called Dragmag. It's a really simple idea, honestly. You just use your Magnezone to trap the opponent's Steel types and take them out, and then your Dragon types absolutely go to town. It almost sounds too simple to work, but no, it's a genuinely solid team style. It's had its ups and downs for sure, but it's something you really do need to keep in mind. It's, a, it's not a joke by any means. So, while Dragon types are notorious in Gens 4 and 5 for being kind of overpowered, they're also pretty notorious in Generations 1 and 2, and it's not because they're underpowered, it's more like undercooked. I mean, let's be real, right? What, what the fuck even is the dragon type in Generation 1? It might as well not exist. It, it barely exists. There is one fully evolved dragon type in Generation 1, and it fucking wishes it wasn't a dragon type. There is one dragon type attack in Generation 1, and it doesn't even do dragon type damage. The fact it's a dragon type move will never come into play. It could be any other type in the game, and nothing changes. Honest to god, the only thing the dragon type even does in Generation 1 is save us from a horrific alternate reality where dragon type was normal flying and is consistently throwing out 134 base attack hyper beams left and right. Believe me, that would not be okay. That would be kind of fucked up and awful. <laughs> it's not like Generation 2 did anything to really alleviate this either. The best dragon type attack in Gen 2 is fucking Dragon Breath, which has 60 base power. 
And like, we got one new dragon type. That's it. And it's not even good. It's the most mid-fucking thing to ever roam the earth. It's just hanging out in borderline achieving nothing. However, while dragon types are very notorious in gens 4 and 5 for being extremely strong, and very notorious in gens 1 and 2 for being very... You don't hear people talk about dragon types in Gen 3 all that much. And that's kind of fair, because they're just really good. The dragon type in Generation 3, at least before Gen 6, is probably the most balanced it's ever been, which is kind of fitting, honestly. I mean, Generation 3 Overused is one of the most loved tiers of all time, mainly because of, you know, how great its balance is. It's a really awesome tier, and it's kind of cool that the dragon type is, you know, sort of doing the same thing. It's just pretty great. Not much more than that, but not any less either. So, in Overused and Below, there are five fully evolved dragon types to talk about. However, there are also three dragon type Pokemon in Ubers. So, I think it's only fair that we go through all of them real quick. Latios and Latias are definitely top five Pokemon in Gen 3 Ubers. They serve a very, very important place in the metagame, and a big part of that is that they are two of the best checks to Groudon and Kyogre, who are also top 5 Pokemon in Gen 3 Ubers. Now, the fact they're that good might surprise you, because they're fairly unimpressive base stats, but you gotta remember, this was back when Soldier was just like a free calm mind. It was a little fucked up and evil, but uh, listen, we'll take what we can get. They're very similar Pokemon, and generally they have two sets that they run an offensive utility set that runs Recover and Refresh, and a more offensively orientated set that typically runs Calm Mind. They're both very similar Pokemon, but generally Latios is considered the better of the two. Latios definitely has its place, especially on more bulky teams or if you're running both. For example, if you run a Calm Mind set, you're not really as good of a check to Groudon and Kyogre, which is a big deal, because it's one of the best features of these Pokemon. So, you could run both Lottie Twins and have one running each set. That way, one of the Pokémon can be a good solid check to Groudon and Kyogre, and the other can be, you know, a more flimsy check, but a great offensive Pokémon in its own right. Again, there are other checks to these Pokémon, but it might be worth running, depending on your team. Overall, they're both fantastic Pokémon in the tier, though. You probably wouldn't expect it, but funnily enough, Rayquaza is actually the weakest of the three Dragon types in Ubers. Latios and Latios are S-tier Pokémon going off the viability rankings, and Rayquaza is currently hanging out in the A-minus tier. Not bad by any means, but, you know, it's kind of surprising, especially since it's a box art legendary. Anyways, it's a pretty versatile Pokémon that dishes out a lot of damage. The standard set is Choice Band, and you can do some serious damage with good prediction. It typically doesn't run Stab, either opting for Hidden Power Ghost or Bug, which makes sense, that hits a lot of the tiers super effectively. It also has Extreme Speed, which is really nice for cleaning up weakened teams and can help mitigate Rayquaza's just alright speed stat of 95. Now, while Rayquaza does threaten a lot of Pokémon in Ubers, I mean, Latios and Latias are both one-hit KO'd by Hidden Power Ghost without significant defensive investment, it's also threatened by a lot of other Pokémon in Ubers. Specifically, there's a lot of Ice Beams being thrown around in the tier, so Rayquaza is anything but a plug-and-play Pokémon. It requires some careful prediction and smart play, but it can definitely do a lot for you in the right hands. Moving on to Overused, we have Salamence, and Salamence really is a defining threat in the tier. Honestly, it's the first great Dragon-type in any Overused tier. Gen 1 and 2 really don't have one. Salamence has a great speed tier, fantastic coverage, hits very hard on the physical and special side, and even has solid defensive utility thanks to Intimidate and even Wish. Salamence isn't like a perfect Pokémon in the tier, but that doesn't change the fact that it's absolutely amazing. Until it's revealed what set it's running, nothing safely switches into a Salamence. It's absolutely terrifying. Now that being said, once it's revealed what set it's running, and there's a few viable sets, mixed, choice band, and Dragon Lance is, you know, it's fallen off a bit, but it's still a potentially very dangerous set. Once the set is revealed, eh, each set has a couple answers. The mix set really struggles to deal with stuff like Milotic and Porygon 2. The physical attacking sets really appreciate Magneton support because they're just, you know, completely stopped by Skarmory. And, you know, if you're choice locked into the wrong move, that can give a lot of problems, especially with stuff like Tyranitar. 
And honestly, while it has a lot of potential to snowball in the late game, the Dragon Land set has a lot of answers. If it gets going, if it can get that momentum, Salamence is absolutely terrifying, but there are things that stop it in its tracks. Now, I have talked about a lot of things that kind of give Salamence a hard time, but that doesn't change the fact that Salamence is an absolutely amazing Pokemon. It forces switches like nothing else, and it can capitalize on them really well. Mix sets just hit so much, you know? Tyranitar folds to Brick Break, as does Blissey. Swampert completely folds to Hidden Power Grass, which is really good because Swampert is a great answer to the physical attacking sets. So, if Swampert mindlessly switches in thinking it's got a free switch, anything but. Dragon Claw is just a very strong move that hits a lot of Pokemon. And another interesting way that Salamence can punish a switch is Wish. I feel like you don't see Wish Salamence a ton, but I wish it was more common. It's a really interesting use of the move. I like it a lot. Also, of course, it's just cute to use Wish on Salamence anyways, because, like, you know, it learns Wish, because, like, when it's a Bagon and a Shellgon, it just wishes really hard to be able to fly, and then it evolves and it can fly. I just think that's nice. It's nice, you know? Is Wish the best option for Salamence? You know, not in every case, but it's nice. It's nice. Also, something I want to mention very quickly, just on the topic of Shellgon, because the weakest fully evolved Dragon type is an underused, Shellgon and Dragonair are actually the best viable Dragon types in Never Used. Unfortunately, neither of them are that amazing. They're both sitting in C tier at the moment in the viability rankings, but far from useless. They're decent Pokemon in their own right. Now, Salamence is not the only Dragon type in Overused. They've got a funny little friend, and their name is Flygon. Now, unfortunately, unlike Salamence, Flygon isn't like a staple of Overused. It's not like a defining threat in the tier. Flygon is just good. It's a solid pick in the tier with some very good strengths, but some very significant weaknesses too. It's like a B tier Pokemon. It's good in the right situation. Flygon's stats are honestly a little bit underwhelming. It does share Salamence's good speed tier, but everything else is a bit meh. However, what it lacks in stats, it makes up for with an absolutely incredible typing. Dragon and Ground, as I'm sure you're all aware, is an absolutely incredible type, and it's backed up by Levitate, giving it a ground immunity on top of that. This makes Flygon one of the three Pokémon in the tier that can take the Edgequake combination of Rock Slide and Earthquake. See, it resists Rock thanks to its ground type, and with Levitate, it floats over Earthquake. It's one of only three Pokémon in the tier to have this trait shared with Claydol and Breloom, although Breloom doesn't have an immunity to either of these moves, it just resists both of them. On top of resisting Edgequake though, its amazing typing and ability also give it an immunity to three very dangerous things in Overused. Sandstorm, Spikes, and Dugtrio's Trapping. A lot of Pokémon would kill to have one of these traits, and Flygon has all three. That's fantastic. Its immunity to two forms of passive damage make it a really good pick on TSS teams, which, you know, revolve around dishing out a lot of passive damage. It allows it to very safely make use of its leftovers recovery, and I use this set a lot, specifically the defensive one, with Toxic, Protect, Earthquake, and Rock Slide. It's a very decent set, and I enjoy it a lot, especially in combination with Pursuit Tar, because, you know, that sets up the Sandstorm, and it also gets rid of some of the Pokémon that you can't really threaten with Toxic, specifically Gengar and Celebi. Unfortunately, there's quite a lot that holds Flygon back from being a top-tier threat in Overused. Again, that typing is great, but it also comes with a 4 times Ice Weakness, which is unideal to put it nicely. Also again, those stats just aren't that great. Yeah, while you do resist Edgequake, you're not exactly tanky, and a lot of Pokémon threaten you pretty hard with repeated hits. Like, you know, resisting Edgequake is nice, but it doesn't mean all that much when Aerodactyl's Double Edge and Swampert's Hydro Pump still chunk you heavily. Another issue with those stats is that not only do you not take hits all that well, but you don't dish them out too well either. A lot of Pokémon can just take Flygon's attacks fairly easily, and then recover off the damage. It doesn't have any kind of a boosting move, and while its Choice Band Earthquake is the strongest Earthquake in Overused, it's still a Choice Set, and Choice Band Earthquake is quite easy to play around. Although one thing I do find cute about the Choice Band set is that it runs the 40 base power Gust a lot of the time, which is just kind of cute. It's specifically to hit Heracross and Breloom, which are Pokémon that otherwise Flygon really struggles to deal with. 
And you wouldn't run Hidden Power Flying, because you'd rather run something like Hidden Power Bug. But, I don't know, I, I, I think it's neat. It's just a very innovative use of a move that I enjoy a lot. Overall, Flygon has a lot going for it, and it's a decent pick depending on what your team needs, but it's got a lot going against it too, although it's solidly overused for sure. I don't see it dropping to BL anytime soon. Next up, we're going to talk about Altaria. And you might be surprised at that, because, you know, in my previous two videos like this, I talked about these Pokémon from best to worst and worst to best, so now I'm kind of fucking everything up. But here's the thing, right? Altaria is definitely the weakest fully evolved dragon type in Generation 3. But because of that, it's the only one in Underused. And in Underused, it's actually a great Pokémon that brings a lot to the table. Its speed is kind of middling, and its offenses are very, very middling, but it brings a ton of utility and survivability to the table. It has pretty decent bulk, and it can actually maintain that bulk pretty well, because unlike Overused, there's no permanent sandstorm to worry about. And also, Altaria has the combination of Rest and Natural Cure. This means that it can use Rest to fully heal itself and get rid of any status, then switch out, come back in, and boom! My boys waking. My my boy. My they 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 woke the fuck up. That's what I'm getting at here. They there's, they're not sleeping no more. Now sticking around for a lot of the game doesn't really matter if you're not actually you know doing anything. But Altaria does bring a lot to the table. It's got decent stalling potential with Toxic and Haze, but it can also be a decent Dragon Dancer. Yeah, its offenses are pretty middling, but a Pokemon like Altaria gets a lot of opportunities to set up in UU. And it's got very good coverage with just Hidden Power Flying and Earthquake. Altaria definitely isn't an offensive monster or anything, far from it. It's not even like a top tier Pokemon in Gen 3 UU, but it's a very solid pick. It can potentially set up a lot of Dragon Dances and, you know, clean a team pretty nicely. Or it can just stall you out and be annoying. Of course it has to watch out for ice moves and stuff, and again there are better Pokemon in the tier, but it's something you should always keep in mind if you do play Gen 3 UU, which I'd recommend, it's a pretty interesting tier, that's for sure. So, there's two fully evolved Dragon types left to talk about, and there's a reason I've left them till last. Dragonite and Kingdra are both currently in Borderline. Borderline is for Pokémon that, you know, don't get the usage to be definitive overused Pokémon, but they're just too powerful for underused. And listen, there are great Borderline Pokémon, there's no getting around that. I mean, Hariyama's a great Pokémon, and it's currently in Borderline, and Breloom is doing better than ever, and it feels like not too long ago it was in Borderline. It's officially moved up to Overuse now. However, more often than not, Borderline is kind of the dumping ground for this shit would be really fucking dumb in Underused, but it still kind of sucks. And... To some degree, that's the case here, unfortunately. That's not to say these Pokémon are terrible or anything. They're, they're absolutely not. If they were, they would actually be in a lower tier rather than hanging out in BL Hell. Dragonite is kind of like an alternative to Salamence, but like, not in a good way. In the way that like, throwing a gun is an alternative to shooting it. It's overall significantly worse, unfortunately. Now, Dragonite does have some things going for it. It's got some very valuable unique tools like Thunder Wave, Thunderbolt and Thunder, and most importantly, Focus Punch. That's a really valuable tool to have. Just as a comparison, Choice Band Salamence Brick Break doesn't quite one-hit KO the standard utility Blissey set, which is a shame. It still does a lot, but you'd love to get that one-hit KO. However, even without a Choice Band, and on the Mix set, which doesn't run maximum attack investment, Dragonite has a 75% chance to one-hit KO the standard utility Blissey set with Focus Punch, and you can even make it a guaranteed one-hit KO by running max attack, although the Mix set usually doesn't. However, Dragonite has a lot of things going against it compared to Salamence. First of all, it's got a much worse speed tier, which is a big deal. That really, really sucks. Also, while on paper it's bulkier, it doesn't have Intimidate, and that really sucks. You just don't have that same, you know, safety net versus physical attackers or the ability to force switches the way Salamence does. Instead, you've got Inner Focus, a near useless ability in Generation 3. Also, you might be wondering whether Dragonite can use Extreme Speed to make up for its lackluster speed stat. And yes, it absolutely can. In Generations 2 and 4, where it actually gets the fucking move. That's right, Dragonite lost Extreme Speed in the generational shift from Generation 2 to 3, 
This is one of the worst cases of losing a move across a generation that I've ever seen. If it had extreme speed, it would probably be a pretty solid Pokemon in overused. It's a massive loss, but it is what it is, unfortunately. Dragonite has unique tools compared to Salamence, and I wouldn't call it useless at all. It's an objectively very good Pokemon, it's just hard to justify its use over Salamence. Lastly, we have Kingdra, and you could argue I fucked up the order here again, because Kingdra is actually better than Dragonite if you're going off the viability rankings, because Kingdra is actually on them, and Dragonite isn't. Wasn't even allowed in. Damn. However, I just kind of wanted to end on Kingdra because I thought it would be more interesting to end on a unique Pokemon rather than just, you know, to put it nicely, shitty Salamence. Sorry, Dragonite. Kingdra brings something very unique to the table in Generation 3 Overused, and that's Swift Swim, which doubles its speed if it can set up Rain. In Rain, even if it has no speed investment, it outspeeds the entire tier, with the exception of some stuff like, you know, Electrode and Ninjask, but... You know, not the most common Pokemon in the world, and even if they do outspeed you, they're not Pokemon you exactly have to be worried about, that's for sure. Also, even hypothetically, if it just sets up Brain Dance and doesn't really achieve anything, that can sometimes be enough, because clearing the weather of Tyranitar's near-permanent Sandstorm? That's a big deal. That can do a lot for a ton of Pokemon. However, if that's not the case and you can kind of get a sweep going, then Kingdra can be pretty scary, that's for sure. Unfortunately, even in a perfect world where Kingdra gets its rain dance off without a hitch and doesn't miss a single Hydro Pump, there are a lot of Pokémon that give it a hard time. Blissey and Snorlax take its hits extremely well, as does the admittedly pretty uncommon Regice. Also, in terms of other water types, all Kingdra has to deal with them are Toxic or Hidden Power Electric, which aren't the best options in the world. In fairness, Gyarados is very afraid of Hidden Power Electric, but as for everything else, not so much. Milotic, Suicune, all these Pokémon give it a hard time, and Kingdra also has the issue of being a water type that does not resist Ice Beam. Kingdra can potentially be really threatening in the late game if you've got stuff like your opponent's Blissey out the way, but it does have a lot holding it back. That being said, I think it's a very cool Pokémon, and it's always fun to see Pokémon take advantage of weather that isn't Sandstorm in Gen 3 overused. It's very cool. I like Kingdra. So that's a little look at Dragon types in Generation 3, or ADV, and honestly, I think it was a very, very interesting generation for the type, even though it's not super talked about. Like, it's such a glow up from Gens 1 and 2, but we're not quite at Gens 4 and 5 where things start to get a little bit problematic. I know I usually focus on Generation 1 with my Pokémon content, but honestly, after Gen 1, Gen 3 is definitely my favourite. Specifically, Gen 3 OU. There's a reason that Generation 3 Overused is as beloved as it is. It is a phenomenal tier, and if you haven't played it, I really do recommend it. That's not to say that the other Gen 3 tiers are bad or anything. They're really cool in their own right. I've played a little bit of Gen 3 Ubers, and I... Really enjoyed it, even though I was kind of ass. I just wanted to use Executor, I thought he was funny. Uh, that being said though, give Gen 3 a shot if you haven't. Even if you're just here for the Gen 1 stuff, I can't recommend it enough. Super fucking cool generation with some super fucking cool tears. Love you all, catch you later.